approximately one year ago now, went to bed, same scenario, 2 a.m. in the morning, and all of a sudden, I woke up into this panoramic, um, what, almost like a film that's playing out in front of me, and I'm in the middle of it. And what I first thought I was looking at was a giant fiery dragon uh, deep up in space, moving, undulating like a serpent, racing towards the earth. Then suddenly my point of view changed, and now I was up above the object, and I could see that it was not a fiery dragon, but rather it was a giant space rock, an asteroid. And the way it was turning as it was moving through the space in the light of the sun, was glistening off of the, uh, the, you know, the, the elements of the stone, it only gave it the appearance that it was moving back and forth. Now, all of a sudden, I'm back on Earth again. And now, I am surrounded by literally tens of thousands of people, and we are on a mountain. Uh, and we are running for our lives, and people everywhere are screaming and begging God to deliver them from what is coming. And I turn and I look over my shoulder and I can see this fiery mountain, basically, this giant rock entering into the atmosphere, burning as it comes through the atmosphere, breaking apart as it comes through the atmosphere. A huge part of it strikes the ocean, a huge part of it strikes the earth. And, the, and all of a sudden, the earth is shaking so violently that none of us can stand up. We're all knocked off of our feet. Uh, it was the most horrific thing. I can hear this terrible sound as if the earth is literally cracking like the mantle of the earth is breaking apart and now I'm looking back over my shoulder again in this giant wall of water just an enormous tsunami hundreds of feet tall coming up over the top of this mountain and again everybody's trying to run then these what felt like large hands come down underneath my arms and lift me up into space and now I'm looking down upon the earth. And here's an important part about this entire thing. I'm not a scientist. I don't know what would happen if an asteroid of that size were to impact the earth. But what I saw, I later found to be exactly how scientists describe what would transpire. With the waters boiling beneath this giant burning rock, the aerosol coming up off of that, entering into the upper atmosphere, setting in motion hurricane activity, the second part hitting the earth, causing a volcano to begin erupting. So what, you, the saw, atmosphere. what yes. you saw is what would actually happen, but you didn't have the knowledge no, of what would actually happen from a scientific viewpoint, but you still saw it. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and, and to use street lingo, it freaked me out. Well, when you I also, started doing the research, it really freaked uh, me out. But I'll tell you the thing that strikes me even stronger. Uh, you heard a name. Yeah. What was the name? So, so as this is playing out, I'm terrified. All of a sudden, I wake up and said, I almost fell out of bed on my face. I mean, I had cold chills all over me. I'd never seen anything this vivid or terrifying. I start writing it down, but then all of a sudden, it was as if a voice. I don't know if this was just in my head or if it was an audible sound in the room, but it was as if a voice spoke and it said one word, apophis. Now, did you know what Apophis meant? I knew this. I knew that there was an ancient Egyptian god I didn't of even darkness. Know. I didn't even know that. Of chaos. Well, because I've studied mythology, but okay. I didn't really know a lot about it. Isn't it interesting? At first you That's thought what it I was thought a I dragon. Saw. That's exactly what I thought I saw. Now, okay. the other thing I knew, and I, and I hardly knew anything about this, was I knew that NASA had discovered an asteroid in 2004 that they named Apophis. And that was basically all I knew about it. So because what I saw was literally a space rock, when I got out of bed, I immediately went and started doing research. One thing led to the other uh, and uh, learned that this asteroid at first was on NASA's radar as being an NEO, a near-Earth object uh, that they believed that uh, in 2004 had the potential to impact the Earth. They still believe it's possible. Okay, now, th this Apophis, this, this interests me. Why do you believe Apophis is from the ancient prophecy about Wormwood in the book of Revelation? Well, first of all, I believe in prophecy. 
I believe in Bible prophecy. I believe this event is going to happen. I did not know that when Revelation 8 was written, where it says a star fell from heaven, yes. it's the word aster. Astron is from the Greek make asteroid. Yeah, I didn't know that until then. And it was a lot of other things that I learned along the way as well. Uh, and the bottom line is Apophis is a real asteroid. And here's what they're saying. They're saying it probably isn't going to strike the Earth in 2029, so they changed their opinion a little bit. It still could, they're saying. But here's what they're saying. But it's going to come so close to the Earth that it's going to knock the satellites out that are in orbit around this planet. Now this is a monster rock, and I talked to several astronomers, including a friend of mine that works at NASA and has above top secret security clearance, and plus Lieutenant Colonel Robert McGinnis that works at the Pentagon, put me in contact with impact specialists, all these scientists, and they said there is no way in the world that you can say that a stone moving 28,000 miles per hour through space that's going to cover tens of thousands of miles before it gets here in nine years is going to come so close that it's going to knock out the satellites and yet be assured that it's not going to hit the planet. They all said that's rubbish, it's a cover up. Here's what I believe. I believe it because I saw it. I believe it because what I saw and the way it came to me has not yet one time in my life failed, including the re resignation of Pope Benedict against mm -hmm. all odds. It has not happened one time yet that it didn't unfold exactly the way I saw it. So I'm, t I'm speaking from personal experience, but it's been validated by the facts after the fact. Uh, so I believe it in all my heart. I, I will look you in the eye and, and give you a new prediction like I did when I told you the Pope was going to resign and everybody said it would never happen. In April of 2029, Apophis is going to strike the Earth. Actually, I had two different astronomers tell me that I wasn't even reading Revelation 8 correctly, that the first four trumpets are the four stages of a singular event. Trumpet number one sounds and fire falls down from heaven and sets the fields and trees on fire. That's the first debris that's being pushed out ahead of an incoming asteroid. Trumpet number two sounds and a giant stone burning like a lamp falls into the sea and wipes out the ships. And this is a breaking up of a binary asteroid or a giant asteroid like Apophis. Uh, trumpet number three sounds, and this is the one that's actually named Wormwood, that contaminates a third of the Earth's waters and many people die as a result of it. And then trumpet number four sounds, and uh, a third part of the stars and the sun and the moon uh, are darkened, which is the result of all. And again, exactly what I saw when I didn't even understand what I was looking at. You say it's a massive cover-up. Yeah, well, so my friend at NASA, he was the one that put me on the trail. They don't want this information getting out any sooner than it's going to. By 2025, people will be able to look up in space and see this with their home uh, telescopes, comp you know, fairly sophisticated telescopes. Two years after that, they'll be able to look up in space and see it with the naked eye. By that time, there's going to be mass chaos and panic. You know, yeah, like Luke 21, 25 right. through 28, it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and that word is asteroid there shall be signs in the asteroids and upon the earth distress of nations that's exactly what I saw with perplexity they don't know what to do about it but to finish that verse, the sea and the waves roaring, that's exactly what I saw. Men's hearts failing them for fear and looking after those things that are coming. And you said we earth. will eventually be able to see it with our naked eyes. That's eye. exactly right. Uh, and But then it says this, but then shall they see the sign of the coming of the Son of Man. And when you see these things begin to come to pass, then lift up your eyes and look up, lift up your heads for your redemption draweth nigh. <laughs> what I saw was people everywhere on their faces begging God. You know the New Testament says some save with fear, right? Hating mm -hmm. even the government spotted by the flesh. Some people are not motivated until something catastrophic like this happens. But the church has also been asleep. Not everybody, but a lot. Uh, and this is going to be a wake-up call for people everywhere who will be turning to God 
the ch many of the people in the church, I imagine that your ministry said is going to use this as the greatest evangelism opportunity perhaps in the history of humankind. It's going to be a great opportunity to reach the greatest, largest number of people because at that time everybody is going to have this on their mind. They're all going to be talking about it. They're all going to be begging God to deliver them. It's going to be a great opportunity. It could literally be.